Hello, it's Ricardo, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Odyssey. Power play is still a thing, and by aligning yourself to a galactic power, you can get some interesting weapons and modules, just like the Pacifier Frag Cannon Grade 3. How do you unlock it, and is it any good? Aligning yourself with a galactic power could not be easier. From the right hand panel, select galactic powers. Now I'm aligned with Zachary Hudson, the purveyor of fine galactic pacifier fragmentation cannons. And once attaining rating three after four weeks with this power, with Zachary, I can then get a big enough ship and get ready to start delivering some of his campaign and other materials that support his campaign to his allies. Now, Zachary Hudson is a Federation Galactic Power. He's been around for donkey's years and looks a little bit like Robert Patrick. I'm sure you'll agree. Now, once you're aligned with your Galactic Power, Zachary Hudson, for the sake of things, you'll get an idea of what he's all about. So you start off at rating one. With that, you get a thousand credits weekly bonus and a 10 power commodity allocation every half an hour. Well, what does this mean? Well, every half hour you can buy 10 items of propaganda or supplies or other materials, or you can pay the handsome fee of 100,000 galactic credits to expedite the process. And we'll come on to that a little bit further on in this video. But we want to get to rating three, where rating three, you get a weekly bonus of 500,000 credits, not to be sniffed at, and also unlocks the pacifier fragmentation cannon. Now for this, I'll be using my good old trusty type nine, the fat badger. It's got more storage space than you can shake a stick at. It'll hold 752 tons of whatever, whether that be political material, it's what we need for power play, or anything else. Is it particularly heavily armed? No, it's a workhorse. It's a carrying ship, and I love it, specifically for picking up tritium for my fleet carrier and delivering items through power play. Now I've got my Type 9 over to Nanoman, which is Hudson's seat of power. I find it easier going to these seats of power because you're guaranteed to get the materials that you want. Once you're at the station, time to get yourself over to the Zachary Hudson contact page, available via contacts. And here comes the first part of the grind in power play. Now if you've seen my other videos, it's exactly the same. You have to correct, collect 10 at a time materials from Zach Hudson and fill your cargo hold. This is going to take a while. I'm not going to bore you through this, but you get the idea. 10 at a time and to expedite the process or wait half an hour is going to cost you a hundred thousand galactic credits. Now once I've filled my cargo hold to the brim of Zachary Hudson's garrison supplies, it's time to go and find a place where I can deliver them and therefore attain rank three and unlock that pacifier cannon. So, Zachary Hudson supplies, I've got 750 tons of those in my Type 9, up to galactic powers, where can I deliver them to? Well, for that, you wanna go over to one of the top section tabs and look in the control tab. This is what I typically use. Now we can see a couple of systems there, Groombridge, LHS2088, and the rest. And you can see which ones are going to be in dire need of these materials. Now the ones that are typically fortifying or under threat are the ones that are probably good for Zachary Hudson if you to go and start delivering these materials. From this point you can select one and then view them on the map to see how far away they are really. You aren't given an indication in light years but are they near any other particular planets or other systems? And you can also check if system map data is available, if they've got the stations there to accommodate your great big honking Type 9, full of all these garrison supplies or political materials. And the way of doing this is the same for each and every power contact. Now for me, I do spend a little bit of time trying to sort out which one is for me, 
Has it got the right landing pad? Has it got the right station? And what else is in the area? Then once that's done, it's time to get yourself over that particular system, whether you jump a carrier over or use the ship and then get yourself in there and wait. Now, right after a little bit of jumping, I've managed to get myself to my station and I've docked with all that political paraphernalia or garrison supplies or whatever it is you're hauling into the power contact. And then fortunately you can just hold your mouse or your pointer or your button or your cursor or whatever on that right arrow and start delivering the political manifestos or whatever it is you're delivering. In my case, uh, supplies from my garrison. So he can stockpile military supplies to be delivered to his forces, making sure they're combat ready at all times. This has cost me 7.5 million to expedite the process. And that's not all. Once it's all delivered, it doesn't unlock straight away because a little bit more waiting has to happen in Elite Dangerous or Elite Dangerous Odyssey. If you're in Odyssey, you can laze around the starport, go to the boozer, do whatever you want, do some more missions. If you're still on Horizons, that's okay. Once you've delivered all that material, you can wait because that pacifier weapon, that power play material doesn't unlock until the next system tick over, which at the moment is every Thursday. Now, this may change, so be worthwhile checking on the forums in the future, but as it stands, the timing of this video, every Thursday. So make sure you do it before Thursday morning. Get it down on Wednesday evening, and then you've only got a short turn to wait for the next day to make sure you're at level 3 and you unlock those power play modules and weapons. Now at the Nest system tick over, like I say, which is normally on a Thursday, Get yourself back into power play, Zachary Hudson. Check out your rating. You'll see you're now at rating level three. And at any station that has outfitting, you'll have the pacifier cannon, the pacifier frag cannon unlocked. So this cannon has got decreased damage, but longer range. And put in a right configuration can really give someone a bloody nose. So getting yourself into the outfitting section, it's time to outfit a ship. Now for this specific build, I'll be making a pacifier Mamba. And why not? It's got some good grade three slots and the pacifier frag cannon is a grade three slash C module. Now, as you can see, I'm putting some of the old modules into storage and it's important that you remember to do that if that's what you want to do. Now, Away go those lovely beam lasers that I've engineered. We'll save them for another ship. And out comes a pacifier frag cannon. Look at that. What a great big honking space gun. Pacifier frag cannon unlocked. That's how you do it. But are they any good? So I went for the Mamba because it's fast and it's maneuverable, right? but it does suffer from an awful lot of heat. So I thought I'd put two small beam lasers on the front, get them engineered up and put some heat disperse, dispersion on them. And then I thought I'd go for all the grade three slots and the grade four slots as well, downgrade that slot to also have a pacifier in it as well. Why not? And see if I can go out and really spoil someone's day. So how did that go? Well, the Mamba certainly is a good looking ship and it certainly is fast and nimble enough. And with the placement of the three pacifier fragmentation cannons on the top of the ship, the dorsal of the ship, then, you know, you think you couldn't lose. Those two of the beam lasers as well need to be engineered up and as well, if I can also see if I can engineer up the pacifiers as well, that could certainly help. They've only got three shots before having to reload in their standard configuration. And this did prove to be a bit of a problem when trying to take down not only bigger ships, because I couldn't lay enough fire down on them, like I've got here with this Corvette, and with the smaller ships, they were zipping away and zipping around before I can lay even more fire down. Really good at knocking out people's shields. I'll give it that. But then you need something else to turn around and knock through the hull. And that's my opinion. I'm gonna give it a few more goes and see how it, how it all pans out. 
I wouldn't say I'm disappointed. I think as a shield degradation device, they are absolutely brilliant. You know, three shots, bang, shields down on any normal ship. If it's engineered, it's obviously going to take a little bit longer. Either way, I've been Ricardo, and thanks very much for watching this video on how to unlock Zachary Hudson's Pacifier Fragmentation Cannons. Let me know how you get on with the Fragmentation Cannons if you decide to unlock them in the comments. I'd be interested to find out what your ship builds are like and how you get on with them in combat, or are you just using them to take out ground-based installations in Elite Dangerous Odyssey. Thanks very much for watching. Like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Hit that notification bell, all at malarkey, and I'll see you in the next video. I'll see you soon.